Hello and welcome to the Genuine Learning Blog. My name is Melissa Galasso and I'm excited to talk to you today about a very interesting uh, proposal for the uh, Professional Ethics Executive Committee or PEAK. Uh, this is something that we knew was coming huh, and I'm excited to see it uh, in issuance so we can kind of take a look at this, but it's related to accounting standard implementation services. Basically, what they really want to think about is how far can an auditor go in assisting the client before the self-review threat or management participation threat becomes so big that you can't actually help uh, and you can't perform that service. And so uh, this is something that popped up a lot during revenue recognition. People were asking what they could do in assisting with a very judgmental, uh, a lot of principle-based approaches. As we see leases coming up for private companies, a lot of questions have been raised about what can I do to support my client? Uh, and this is here to help uh, client, uh, firms make that decision about what is an acceptable level. Uh, so this was just issued on September 20th. Uh, comments are due in 90 days, which is uh, December 20th, 2021. And again, uh, this is really stemming from these increased uh, complexity of accounting standards and questions about what can I do uh, without impairing my independence. Uh, and so obviously when we are assisting with planning and executing the implementation of these standards, there are quite a few different uh, issues that we're gonna have. Obviously self-review and management participation are going to be threats to independence. And so now we have to evaluate what can we do without crossing the line. And so basically they have provided a list of what they consider to be non-attest services. And uh, these would apply the general non-attest services rule. Uh, and so management would have to have ski, skill, knowledge, or experience. Uh, they would have to take responsibility. You'd have to have additional representations, um, but it would follow the same rules as non-attest services. You would have your ethics uh, document and your independence documentation here. And so long as you obviously followed the general requirement for performing non-attest services, it would be at an acceptable level and you would not impair your independence. So you would be able to help provide training, something that a lot of firms do to clients uh, who are getting ready for these large standards. So they want to make sure that they are appropriately up to date on the requirements. So they'll provide training that would be acceptable again. Uh, as part of this, um, as long as you're following the general non-attest services rule. Um, researching or providing advice, making recommendations and assisting management in identifying financial statement account balances, contracts and contra uh, transactions to be assessed, right? So thinking about what is a lease under topic 842, that's really saying, yes, you can help a client, um, you, you know, assist them in making the identification here. You can assist the client with summarizing the attest client's uh, analysis and policies, right? So as we look at this, uh, the, the work that they're being done, obviously the summarization would be acceptable. Uh, providing observations and recommendations on management's overall project plan timeline. So assuming management puts this together, uh, is this going to be you know, acceptable for the audit per, uh, part of it? Assisting management in drafting implementation strategies or methods. Again, you can't do it for them, but you can assist. Assist the attest client in developing or implementing templates, including those uh, that relate to specific calculations. Again, so long as they meet the discrete uh, tool exemption, or sorry, exception uh, in, the, um, uh, in this section, uh, 1.295.145. Um, as normal, you can still propose uh, standard or adjusting journal entries, again, so long as the client reviews them and approves them uh, as part of that overall process. You can provide recommendations related to the standard, again, uh, looking at potential revisions to uh, policies and procedures. Um, and you can provide recommendations regarding technology. We see a lot of questions about, well, what lease software should I be looking at, right? So that's really what they're saying here is, again, you have to follow the non-attest services rule. We're not saying that that doesn't apply, but we're saying so long as you have um, followed all of those requirements, then the threat would be at an acceptable level. Now, on the other hand, certain things are just not acceptable and would automatically impair independence. So leading any implementation team at the attest client, that is a big no-no, right? That's a management decision. Management has to be responsible for leading the engagement. Um, making decisions on how to implement the accounting standard. Again, we can make recommendations. Uh, we can uh, you know, have uh, some assistance there, but we can't make any decisions. We can't set any policies or procedures related to the accounting standards. Again, we can review information that the client has pulled together but we can't actually set that policy. Uh, design new or redesign internal controls over financial reporting. Again, anytime we take responsibility for those internal controls, that automatically impairs our independence. And then designing new or redesigning existing financial information systems, also a big no-no here. 
So basically the concept is they're trying to provide really good guidance on when you have officially crossed the line uh, to impair your independence. So again, this has gone out uh, for proposal 90 day comment period. And basically they're recommending that once they finalize this and they issue it in the Journal of Accountancy as how they in, you know provide uh, updates on all changes to ethics, they once they put it in the Journal of Accountancy, that's deemed to be communicating that change. Uh, they believe it could be effective 90 days after it appears. Uh, and there is a question in the exposure draft as to whether we think that's operable, right? Is 90 days enough for a, um, a firm to be able to implement this. Now, many would say that this is really not new. It's really just clarifications. Uh, and so 90 days would be more than sufficient. Others feel like, especially depending on the timing and if we're in the middle of the lease standard, how is that going to impact? So this is a great opportunity for you guys to weigh in and let the AICPA's Professional Ethics Executive Committee know what it is that uh, you would recommend here. So uh, provide some feedback on the bright lines that they provided, but also the effective date. All right, guys, that's a wrap on today's session. Hopefully you found this helpful and you will provide some uh, some feedback to the AICPA as they prepare to uh, issue this in a final standard. So thank you guys so much for joining me and I hope to see you on a future blog. Have a great day, guys. Bye-bye.